cool. So I really wanted to share about this topic of ML-powered autocompleters. Just generally, I'm excited about machine learning. I'm excited about Python. And autocompleters have been around for a little while, but the new conflux of the two has some exciting new possibilities. And so I want to empower you all to at least be aware of and try these out. So this is going to be a quick intro to some cool tools, um, which are ultimately designed to enhance your productivity and focus while coding. Uh, talk, quick talk disclaimer, I only have five minutes to share this. As, as the other people have said, this is going to be focused on editor agnostic options. I'm not going to dive into every editor out there that has an autocompleter. I'm going to talk about more or less the concepts and the broad stroke features. Deeper comparison I'll leave to you, the programmer. Uh, and like I said, I'm a passionate enthusiast about big ideas. That's mostly a caveat in case I trail off or I go into a tangent. Okay. Autocompletions, a very quick review for anybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about. Autocompletions are a tool that helps you save on tedious lookups and keystrokes. What's happening on the right is just an example that I pulled from the Atom autocomplete, or autocomplete Python uh, package. And you can see when the sort of uh, uh, modules pop up as somebody's typing, you get examples for what to type next, and they just automatically get filled in. The goal of this, broadly, the goal of this type of autocompletion tool, this type of dev tool, help the coder by offering useful completion suggestions at the cursor, as in while you're typing, um, and then optionally giving the ability to insert tokens automatically. That's autocompletions kind of uh, at a high level. Most autocompletion um, uh, so far uses something called static program analysis. So these are typical auto-completion tools. They index your static code, meaning they don't run the code, but they look at everything, they read everything, they kind of memorize all of the possible tokens and words and things that you might code. Um, I won't spend too much time on this, but when a user begins to type a word, it's basically going and using what it has memorized to surface the things that are possibly relevant or that might complete what you're writing. Um, same thing for when you're tab completing from an object. Say you've written something and you know it has certain modules or, or methods and things like that. Um, you can have it, it will essentially use that index of knowledge to go and retrieve those and display them to you. Here's an example of a, a well-known auto-completion tool that's been around for a little while. It's called JEDI. It's an open source project um, by David Halter. It's, a stat, it's called a static analysis tool because it uses just exactly what we talked about. Um, and it works with Python IDEs and editors. It's well tested, it's reliable. Um, it's the one I came across first. It has less use case coverage than some of the newer proprietary tools, um, but it's still um, an awesome, that was three minutes. <laughs> awesome option. So here's what happens when you add in um, AI, these machine learning statistical uh, information. When you combine statistical data, you get more advanced suggestions. So essentially this is powered by advances in natural language processing combined with ML modeling being easier to use. And we're aggregating real world usage patterns from places like Stack Overflow or public repos and things like that. It's very similar to Gmail's Smart Compose feature. So when Gmail offers you more than one way to, or, or a way to complete a whole sentence, it's very close to what's happening now for, what, for code. Um, I'm not gonna get into this, there's not really a whole lot of time left. Um, but there are these different models that go into generating predictions. There's a syntactic model, which is um, something more akin to GPT-2, this larger language model that's being used on English. And then there are semantic models, which are more language specific. So for, for Python, for example, you'd have a deeply tuned semantic network. Um, to quickly run through some other examples of this, of the AI autocompleters, here's one called Tab9. You can go check, check this one out. You can see here on the example on the right, it's using probabilities to rank order suggestions. In this request library, it's seeing basically that 80% of the time it's gonna be a post. And so it's ranked that up at the top. It's using some proprietary models to do this. Um, it can compute locally or via the cloud. It's available via several editors, um, language agnostic. Um, another one, um, Kite, full disclosure. I'm working with the guys from Kite. They are, um, some of them are here tonight if you wanna to talk to them. They're using um, essentially a very similar idea. Um, they're modeling probabilities, combining different models, um, training on a large corpus of open source code. Um, and they are now using something called, or they can do multi-token line of code completions and intelligent snippets. So they can go a little bit farther and they compute 100% locally. Um, 
very quickly, this is what an intelligent snippet looks like. So it shows the function call. So it shows more of, say, the arguments that you might need to fill in for this request.post. So instead of just saying so the next um, token, it's giving you an idea for the full completion. Um, I'm just going to skip the first part, 2020 and beyond. Tune up, stay tuned, try out these tools. Tech is evolving rapidly. Thank you.